Hello and welcome back to my Drone How video series. My name is Raida Boost and in this brief video we take a look how to generate point cloud through photogrammetry. So in my previous videos we have seen how to generate a mesh model but in some cases we may prefer point clouds instead. For example point clouds are very good in terms of context skimming and you can also regulate how many points you want to see, for example, uh, in some specific cross-section. Also, point clouds can be very useful when you want to use uh, some additional packages which can, let's say, simplify modeling some specific components. And this workflow is also very useful for as-built models. So, let's turn our attention to computer screen and let's pick some software package which can generate a point cloud and also we take a look at uh, some further workflows, different viewers and what else we can do with that point cloud. I want to start to show you the end result. I'm using a free viewer to show those point clouds. It's called Portrait and basically anybody can install it into their own web server. And this software is also meant for huge point cloud presentations. So if I open up my link, then I find my point cloud and do a double click. And this is our current um, point cloud, which we are generating also in a minute. It presents one building and uh, the total area or construction area is about 20,000 square meters. We can see obviously that we do have uh, some other parcels around here, but we are focusing on this red building and its surroundings. So it's about uh, 20,000 square meters and we do have in here about 800 millions of uh, points and the ground sample distance is currently 1.37 centimeters. This sample distance is coming uh, based on what drone we use and from which height we are taking those pictures. So in here we have measurements done at elevation of 50 meters. As such we get 1.37 centimeters for our pixel or the distance between those points. Of course when we do those exports we can uh, define how many points or what the distance should be. So in some cases we may want to give a context and we do not need that much points so we can increase the distance. But if we want to use some other software for modeling purposes then obviously we may need to have a more tense point cloud. Okay, so I have shown you actually one point cloud before and uh, it was a lot bigger area. I will show you also in here. So this point cloud is from landboard and uh, it has been taken uh, from the plane at elevation of 1200 meters and the point distance or ground sample distance in here is about 25 centimeters. So 25 centimeters in here which is good for context and in here we have 1.37 centimeters. But the number of points is uh, quite similar. So in here we have about 800 millions of points and in here we have 420 million of points. So two times less but um, yeah because the ground sample distance is a lot bigger then we can kind of compare the number of points and it flows very smoothly in this portrait um, web portal. Okay and if I zoom in for example to this same building which is actually in here covered with white lining so I can also increase for example how many points I want to see in my view and for context this point cloud is probably enough and if I go back to my drone survey then uh, this same building is now in here. Uh, different purposes or different use cases. We can generate our point cloud based on our needs or use case and uh, yeah let's uh, take a look how we can do that. So I'm using in this video Pentley's context capture. I have been using it also beforehand and you can 
check again my previous videos because in this brief video I will simply focus on to point cloud workflows. I'm not creating a project from scratch but uh, I'm opening uh, my previous project and then I will show you what you should consider and uh, what you should um, change when you want to generate uh, point cloud instead of uh, mesh data for example. Yeah? Let's open up a recent project. You start by importing photos. I do have about 200 photos and once you have those photos you can also carry out a survey point uh, analysis meaning that uh, you can increase the precision of your data so that uh, it will be in correct coordinate. Once this is done then you can generate your preliminary model which is also important step to check that uh, most of your photos are in correct position in 3D space and then you can move on and uh, do a final calculation reconstruction. So for example in my previous video I was creating a mesh model and this looked like so. But now I would like to generate a point cloud because I may want to use this point cloud in different software packages which enables to use um, different modeling techniques. And to do that, uh, it's basically simply a different output format, which also means that um, if I do have already one calculation done, then uh, this point cloud generation is much quicker. For example, this calculation took about two hours, but my point cloud will take about uh, 30 minutes. This is done by using previously calculated data. So I do have in my project this available which takes some additional space of course but uh, as long as I plan to regenerate this data it's good to have it. And one of my previous videos was also showing you that uh, you can check this through free up disk space command which enables you to remove temporary files. Okay if I want to have my point cloud then uh, I can use my previous reconstruction and just generate another production. Pick my node and then I submit new production, process with context capture engine and then I can give a name. I use a default one, then I hit the next. In here I can select my 3D point cloud instead of 3D mesh. I click next again. Now I can select my point cloud format. So LAS is the most common format and also this format was used in my land board case study. Usually this LAS files are compressed which uh, is an LAZ. Also my landport data was uh, compressed but I don't want to compress this time because uh, I want to use uh, this LAS directly. But if you want to save some space and you are not uh, using maybe this file right now then obviously you can reduce this space requirement. So next important parameter is point sampling. If you can recall from the start that uh, my pixel is about 1.37 centimeters but if you want to generate uh, let's say some kind of point cloud which you use for context then maybe you don't need that many points and you can increase for example that ground sample distance is maybe 10 pixels instead of uh, let's say 1.4 centimeters it's 10 centimeters. It's up to you and uh, of course you can also select meters and uh, change directly meters value. So no compression and also if your drone's sensor does have uh, different capabilities then you can select a color source. Currently I do have only one source available which is basically picture color scheme. Okay now I click next I select my coordinate system. Next again, I can change my pounding box, which is uh, important uh, in cases where you want to limit the area to where you want to generate your point cloud. For example, I'm using currently the full area, but if I go back to my final result, then obviously if I don't care about those other areas around it, I can limit my point cloud generation let's say smaller area and of course 
by doing it, I can save lots of space, meaning that my point cloud file is also lighter. I'm keeping it in that way right now, but uh, just keep in mind that uh, usually it is important in cases where you focus on some object only, then uh, it makes sense to limit the area you want to generate. So I'm keeping same values, I hit next again, and then I can select the destination. And that's it. If I do a submit, then uh, I start the generation of my point cloud. But because I have done it before, I don't do it again. And let's focus on the final result. So once my calculation has been finished, I can see the final result. In current case, I do have also main nodes different. But as I said, you can basically generate your point cloud at the same level in where you have your mesh model. So it's up to you how you divide your project. But currently my point cloud is on the separate node. So reconstruction 2 and if I click production 2 then I can see that okay. This calculation took about 30 minutes and because I had already some calculation made so that's the reason why it's uh, much less than uh, my mesh model, which took about two hours. And if I go to properties, I can check which parameters were used to generate this data. And if I go to 3D view, then uh, I can see that I can't actually present my LAS file point cloud data inside context capture, which uh, takes us uh, also to the next uh, workflow, how we can convert this LAS file to be able to use it uh, in a viewer or in some extra workflows. Let's take a look to this uh, output directory in where our LAS file is generated. I can see that uh, the size of my point cloud is about 20 gigabytes, which is quite big. But of course, uh, our resolution or the density of our point cloud is also quite big, meaning that uh, we are using 1.37 centimeter of ground sample distance. Now this LAS file can be then used in different workflows in different software packages and we are currently checking how we can view it. So obviously there are different viewers available and as I showed you at the beginning I was using freely available portrait viewer which can be used in desktop uh, PC as well in a web server. Very easy to use and also this portrait is meant for huge point clouds. So if I download this portrait from portrait website, I showed it also in my previous video, then I can fire up my application. So portrait desktop, double click, and it has the same user interface as in my web viewer, as I showed you before, which makes it uh, very easy to use in terms of uh, user interfaces. Yes, one in desktop and one in web. And if I try to open my LAS file, where is it? In here. Then basically I can simply drag it into my user interface. As I see, it will be converted, which obviously takes time. So instead, if I want to open it, I will do this conversion beforehand. And uh, in that way, I do have all my files ready. And then I can open up those converted files whenever I need it. So how do I convert this LAS file? Actually, I was showing one possible workflow or software in my previous videos again, which is called Lush Tools. Anybody can download it, Lush Tools. And uh, to convert it for Portrait, I can use a sub program called Lush Publish. Yeah, double click. And then I can simply select my LAS file as a source. I hit browse and find my file. Here it is. I do a double click and I can see that uh, I do have about 800 millions of points. Well, okay, 771 million of points. Anyway, once I select my LAS file, I check my conversion parameters on the right hand side. For example, I can select directory into where I want to convert it. And I do need to ensure that uh, I do have enough space. Usually this converted file is a bit smaller than this original file. 
I can then select output format. I select the bin and then I can uh, also give a name to my HTML file which can be changed also later and those files are important when I do want to upload this data into my web server in where I do have portrait as well yes and I showed it already in my previous video so once I have those settings set up I can hit run and my point cloud will be converted it may take time because uh, our files are quite large so let's take a look at our final result I close this guy and the data that was generated from this less published tool is all here so this data is important also when you want to upload it into web server but to be able to view your point cloud before you upload you can use a portrait viewer desktop version and then instead of less file you are going into folder point clouds and you can find a file called cloud and now you just drag it into this user interface and this time because it is already converted you can check it immediately and you can use same tools that you can use uh, in web server for example measure distance area volume also pick point coordinates you can also generate uh, simple animations in here loads of different possibilities and if you want to upload it into a web server please check my previous video it's very easy to do yes you do need to have your own web server and this data as i said usually it's smaller but um, if i check my properties i can see that current size is about 12 gigabytes instead of 20 it's 12 gigabytes so all that data should be uploaded and then portrait viewer can be used in a similar way as in desktop version and uh, this can be shared by anybody and uh, anybody can use those tools check coordinates take measurements as such to conclude this video this video was all about how you can generate a point cloud through photogrammetry of course if you drone does have a lidar sensor you can get that point cloud directly but also in that case uh, some data analysis should be carried out or conversion because um, drones with image sensors are more widely available at least today then as you saw to generate the point cloud whatever photogrammetry software you're using is really easy if you got excited to see my next episode please do subscribe to my channel and you get notifications once i upload a new video bye bye